Okay, so I'm going to talk today about APIs, uh, the glue that makes the internet awesome and competitive. So some of you guys might be familiar with this if you come from a product background. Uh, this will be pretty high level, not too engineering-y, and we'll uh, go through a case on um, what these things are and what they, what they mean. Uh, so API is an application programming interface, and really what it is is if you work for any company that has some kind of web-based application, uh, you can expose some of that functionality to the rest of the world. So uh, that's one side of it. And the other is, let's say you're building something, you may say, ah, who else do I need to plug into? Do I need to uh, connect to Facebook? Do I need to connect to Twitter? Do I need to connect to Salesforce if I'm building some kind of internal you know, inventory management app or something like that? And the way all these connections happen is via the API, which is essentially two applications connecting over a uh, web service, which is just a call over the web, and exchanging information. So. Uh, this is as technical as we get here today. You guys missed the demo, but uh, asking a T14, it was pretty incredible. <laughs> uh, and there's, there's, these are very standardized protocols uh, across the web. If I want to talk to you, we're going to use RESTful protocol, and that means I want to send data in this specific format, and you're going to give me back an answer. And basically, you can say, you can do a GET, which says, give me some piece of information, or you can do a POST, which says, I'm going to send you a piece of information that you're going to do something with. OK, so some examples. We'll try to make this a little bit more concrete. Uh, Salesforce has a humongous API, basically anything you can do with the Salesforce web-based app, uh, you can also do via their API. So you may, on your, on your home page, someone says, yeah, I want to sign up for a white paper. You're going to go uh, call their API, say, great, put this person in as a new lead, and all that happens without any human intervention. Fantastic. Uh, Facebook API, as, as you guys are cruising around the web, I'm sure you've seen you know, 18 of your friends like this site. Um, that all happens because that site is calling the Facebook API as soon as you come there. And Google Maps API, this one's everywhere as well. Uh, you think about, you know, you're building an app that involves some mobile piece to it, like you're, here's one, I'm looking for the closest coffee shop. Instead of building this whole map thing from scratch, Google's going to let you call them, uh, send them information about your coordinates, and they'll give you close to something or directions to something else. They, they basically built all this for you, so you just need to call it. Okay, so then we'll just do a quick case here. Um, and this gets a little, little bit into the kind of the street, strategic issues around either building an API or integrating very tightly with someone else's API, because you're sort of you're sort of getting into bed with another company that may or may not uh, want to stay with you down the road. So we're gonna talk about Instagram and Twitter, uh, companies that many of you probably know well. Uh, when Instagram came out, they had this really cool Twitter API integration where you signed up, they said, oh, would you like to see all your Twitter, you know, people you follow on Twitter? Great, you know, very quickly you could start following them on Instagram. You know, as a young company for Instagram, you see how this is incredibly valuable. With just the, you know, this probably took somebody a week to do of coding, and all of a sudden they've greatly increased the um, sort of the the benefits uh, to a new user of signing up. All of a sudden, I have this great Instagram experience. All of my favorite celebrities I can follow right on Instagram. You see how this is hugely valuable to you. And at the same time, uh, Instagram used Twitter's API to add value to Twitter. They had this great card API where you could insert rich media into people's Twitter stream. Uh, so this person, you know, on Instagram, posted a photo, they hit the button that said post to Twitter, and right in line in your Twitter feed you have this wonderful, uh, beautiful, rich media experience. All that kind of changed in 2012. Facebook bought Instagram, and Facebook and Twitter are I'd say not on the, the friendliest of terms. So what happened after that? Well, very quickly, you can no longer find your Facebook friends if you sign up for Instagram. Uh, that's, the, that's the screen you got. Eventually, Twitter just said, no, I'm sorry, you can't use our API. And on the other side, our beautiful, rich media became this. You have a link that says Instagram.com, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is a tweet from Khloe Kardashian a few weeks ago. And, uh, you can see how this is kind of lose-lose, right? Now all of a sudden Instagram is a worse application, Twitter is a worse application. These are strategic issues the companies were dealing with, but all the kind of the mechanisms here were these APIs where we would send information back and forth. Uh, and I want to bring this back to one uh, framework that some of you first years have probably recognized, the coopetition framework from Core Strategy. Uh, and this is the idea that oftentimes you have people that are both your uh, competitors and complementers. Their service adds to your service, um, like a hot dog and mustard, uh, but they're also competing with you in that they, you know, think of Twitter and Instagram, these are both, you know, content, so social content um, products that are going to be competing for users at the same time. And the API is where sort of this intersection happens, right? You, 
you really can increase the value of your product by tightly integrating with other people while also making them more likely to use these other products, which may take away from your time. So uh, we won't go too deep into the strategy, but this is sort of the idea, I think, that, that underlies this space. And that's it. I told you I'd be brief. <laughs> Questions? So I see many websites can use the Facebook login and Twitter login. Is that part of the API functionality? Yes, and Mr. Wan probably knows about this from his Facebook site. But yeah, so these guys have Facebook and Twitter are also locked in this battle of who is going to be like the identity around the web, right? So Facebook would love it if every site you go to says log in with Facebook. That's just great information for them. They're going to know everything that you're doing around the web. Uh, but yes, that is very much calls the Facebook API to say, you know, here's this person's credentials, send me back their name, location, list of friends, all that, all that stuff that you may authorize that application to do, and boom, all of a sudden, you know, whatever you signed up for is going to know a lot about you, which could lead to a better experience, and also is going to be great for that company to, you know, kind of have that head start on figuring out who you are. Yes. Were there drawbacks to um, using the, that you found that for you know startups to use other APIs? Um, no, I think as a startup, it's immensely valuable to plug into these things. Uh, you know, this whole this Instagram thing is you're sort of already a big a big fish at that point. But if you're a small little app, it adds instant functionality to everything you do, and it's much easier to. Uh, leverage other people's work that they've done and their functionality, then build yourself. And I, I mentioned, I'll, I'll mention this, some companies have even built uh, their whole business model around just providing API services to you uh, so that you don't have to build stuff yourself. I'll, I'll, one example from my work experience is sending email is like this painful thing where you have to, uh, your domain has to be clean and you have to have this reputation so you don't go to the spam filter. This company has created a service that says, Use our API to send your email. We'll use our servers. It'll be, you know, we will get you through the spam filter, and that's like instant. You know, that's an instant benefit for your application that, and that you didn't have to actually build yourself. So I think I think it's great as a startup. As a bigger company, you have to be very careful of sort of whose feet you might be uh, stepping on. That's right. Um, I actually have a question. Did, did any companies like charge for using their API, or is it usually just like a free thing that they're kind of opening, or like what's the other than getting Facebook to be say like an identity across the internet or something like that? But what's what's the benefit to Facebook of letting other people use their API? Yeah, some do charge. I I think like Google Maps will have like two versions, right? If you only use us this much, free. We don't care. We're happy to spread our functionality around the web. If you're like a huge application that's going to be hitting it so much, and that's a kind of a load for them to handle. Uh, from their standpoint, they'll charge you. They'll just charge you like you know some fraction of fraction of a penny each time you hit it. I think uh, for these all these social plays, it's I don't even know if they do charge because it's much more about we want our tentacles in every every area of the web. And this is the way to do it. This is an example of how kind of people are kind of going away from APIs, and we talked a lot about like personal data and sharing and kind of how it all works. Do you see people as getting like? Mm, more sensitive to APIs and what people share, or is it getting more open? Um, it's a good question. I don't. I, I sort of tying it to the other themes we've heard about today. The, the API is a, is a wonderful kind of mechanism, right? Like just strictly from like a programming standpoint, it's really easy and wonderful way to connect. Uh, I do think I, I I think you guys all made valuable points, like an odd month thing about like do we we would become more of an owner of our data. I think that's probably the way this goes. Um, but I, know, I don't see sort of the way people connect. When I allow a connection, I'll, it'll probably happen via some mechanism like this. But yeah, I do see kind of a tightening of that in the future. Yeah? I just wanted to build on the point of potential risks for startups or so over-integrating the APIs of big guys. I guess one of the risks would be uh, if you put too much emphasis on uh, you know, some functionality to support it in a version of the Facebook API, then uh, you might have some technical challenges to solve if the functionality will be obsolete on the latest versions. So there has to be a fine balance between what's your own proprietary functionality versus what, what functionality you borrow from you know, 
big guys like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah, totally agree. And these things change all the time. They'll release like a version, like so API version one, version two, and it's you know they're not going to help you update your application to keep it working. That's not, that is on you. So maybe I uh, glossed over sort of the the, the engineering resources required for this. Um, but you know, a lot of a lot of mobile apps are you know take this piece of functionality from here, take something here, take this user group, and kind of mush them all together. And that only happens if you're willing to kind of leverage these things. Yeah. Do you look at um, innovation and uh, how companies are trying to get like other companies to innovate using their API? Yeah. So I think um, I really like the Twitter as sort of a case uh, for API usage because when Twitter started. They had a great API, and they said, like, everybody use this thing, right? And, uh, and that created this whole ecosystem of uh, innovative uses around the Twitter API. People were slicing and dicing Twitter data to get sentiment, uh, you know, sentiment analysis around shows, right? Which all happened from people sucking down that information. So I think Twitter very much spurred um, the value of their product, not just by getting their, not like the um, user not, not like the passport thing where they're getting users to use it, but uh, more in that they're, because their data is so easy to use via the API, the, the um, amount of products that sprung up around it was just incredible and added a ton of value to their whole like, ecosystem. Thank you.